Zoom just released these awesome new polling features that are great for quizzes, but in general, they're really, really good for interactions as well. So when you are giving a webinar or a meeting, then if people are online, they're very likely to just go off and do something else on their computers or in their house. There are so many people that are just not gonna listen to you. And that's why polling is really good because polling gives each audience member something to do, something to actively do. Whereas if the host is like, right, well, how do you feel about this? What would you like to drink? And then everyone gets this pop-up and they answer the question. That is a much, much better way to force people to pay attention. Now I am launching this from my mobile, so it's perfectly doable like that. And it's actually a pretty easy feature to use. By the way, my name is David Benayim and I have tons of videos on Zoom, Teams, Power BI, PowerPoint, Excel, Google Sheets. If you're using tech of the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you wanna see more. So to switch it on for your account, you need to go to zoom.us, this website, and then navigate to your account and then settings. And over here, you can search for where the feature is and then enable it. Control F, I find is the best way to search for it. There we go, poll was already in there. And you've got here, allow hosts to create advanced polls and quizzes. So I already had this one on by default, but now I'm switching this one on, I can save that. And I'm gonna do the same for my webinars, just save that. I don't know why they're not on by default, I guess Zoom doesn't want you to get confused by extra options, but they are pretty great and they're not that hard to use. So once you've done that, then you can add them inside your webinars or your meetings. So I navigated to my webinar and then I clicked on the polls and quizzes thing. This is important, it says users using older versions of Zoom will not be able to participate in the polls with a new question type, so take quizzes. So we're gonna assume that everyone is using the newest version. By the way, you can now set up Zoom to automatically download updates. So it can be always the most up-to-date version. I'll put a link in the description as to how to get that set up. The general one allows you to do a poll. This has been around for a long time and this one is quite new. So poll, this allows you to do either single or multiple choice. You can have multiple questions inside a quiz. Personally, I don't like how they do this because generally when you want a poll, it should be one question and you can have multiple single question polls are better than one poll with multiple questions because you do just want a single question, not an entire survey. So you would write your question. So favorite film, you can reorder them like this if you want to. You can choose if it's multiple choice, if you have a tick box thing. If you do that, I recommend saying here, so tick multiple, so people are clear on what they need to write. This does not feel like something you can click on, but click on it and rename it. Especially if you're using a lot, which I do often. So those are your basic polls. But what you can do now is you can create an advanced poll. You have matching, rank order, short answer, long answer, fill in the blanks, rating scales. So these are all brand new. Plus you have the ability to mark something as a quiz and set a correct answer. Correct answer is, please set the answer and it's going to be avatar. Let's look at some other options. So matching, so here you can have, so you can then again make a quiz and set the right answers should you want to. You don't have to, and you can say that, well, A is going to be Avengers, this is going to be Star Wars, this is going to be Guardians, and this is going to be Star Wars again. Done, save. After the, the standard polls, the next one that I really like is quite simply a short answer, because what this allows you to do is ask the audience a question and have them actually respond. So it's kind of like making sure that they type something. So here I can say, what do you like to drink? And then have them add that. Again, you can make it a correct answer. I probably wouldn't do that for these free type ones, but save, create. You can go here and you can also choose other ones. Long answer, this is pretty much the same as the short answer because you can change the minimum and the maximum. Uh, rating scale. This is, well, I mean, how did you like something from one to 10? So it will give you something like this. You can edit if you want to do the labels. And I'm going to press save. And then I'm going to create. You can also do a, a rank order. 
So you can say, rank these as your preference. So this is kind of like a Likert scale. There we go, so here's a rank one. And the last one here is the, fill in the blank, the actor, and then blank, blank one, blank two, just gonna do one, is Spider-Man. And then for this one, you probably want to do a quiz and a correct answer. So you can choose whether it's case sensitive or not. Press save like that. Lastly, let's show what people tend to get wrong. So let's create a regular poll, but we're going to leave this blank and not edit it. It doesn't look like something you can edit. So that's a bit annoying and we're gonna do multiple questions. So here I'm going to say just different polls that I want at different points in time. So something I often ask is how is the speed? And then I would say, and now let's add another question. I'm gonna press save. So now we have our poll questions and we can actually see what it's like in the meeting. Well, hello there, here I am in my Zoom meeting. So let's see how it looks from the host perspective. So if you click on polls, then you can see it pop up over here. Now you can choose which one you want because it's renamed. Remember the one I didn't rename like that? That's really ugly and it's got two questions and it looks like this. You can choose to launch them. You can choose whether panelists can participate. That's for webinars. And when you launch them, it looks like this and it expects people to answer two questions, which people don't usually do, especially if they're unrelated. But the biggest problem with this is that if you set something up, then you might think I'm gonna set up two in the same one, but no, this is for during the session. This is for after the session. So there are different times and therefore it doesn't make sense. So when you end the poll, then you can share the results and then everyone will see them on their screens. You can also download the results if you have them and you say that it wasn't anonymous. So you don't use that option. So all of the ones that we did are over here and you can launch them in all the same way. Let's see how it looks from a participant's perspective. So here I am as a participant and I can vote in the poll. So I can press submit. Here it says, so you can see your responses. And then this is the, the basic one, the single choice one. And then the host can share the results and see this. If there were multiple people, then you'd see it in a bar chart showing like that. So let's look at some other ones. So this is the one with two things that you have to answer. So submit, and then you can see it there. Here is a matching one. So you have to match it. And if you get it wrong, then when you submit. So the host can then choose whether they wanna share the results of what you got right and what you got wrong, like that. There we can see what I got right and what I got wrong. Notice that I am managing this entirely from a mobile, so you can very, very easily do that as well. This is the free type one. And again, I really like this. It's much better than saying, can you write down in the chat this thing? Because it pops up so everyone can see it. You can also relaunch a poll. So if I wanna relaunch this one, and I like to say uh, sprites, for example, I can submit and then, yeah, it just has answers like this. There's the feedback one, as you might expect. This is a ranking one. So you need to put them like that. Notice that even though it is ranking, you can put two that are the same. It's more of a Likert chart. And then when you can share the results and then you can see how people voted, color coded like that which is pretty cool. Great, so that's pretty much how you can do a polling in Zoom, including the advanced polling that I think is really, really fantastic. And I highly encourage people to use them because it is the best way to get engagement inside your meetings. It is a great way to give the participants something to do. My name was David Benayim and I have tons of videos on my channel about Excel, Zoom, Teams, Power BI, if you're using tech of the workplace, then I'm covering you on my channel. So subscribe if you like this content because I have weekly videos. All right, see you next time.